This episode was helped brought to you by our newest sponsor, Kelowna Brewing Company. They're a brewery out there in Eastern Iowa. So if you're in the area, make sure to stop by Kelowna and check out their brewery. Great food at the restaurant there. Great beer, obviously. If you're in the Midwest, check out any Hy-Vee's. I believe they carry the six packs and they have different types of flavors. So you guys are going to want to, you know, definitely try that out. And I think throughout this whole process, Fishing Kid and myself for Beer Fish Fanatics, we're going to be doing some giveaways here and there. If you guys can go ahead and tag us here and there with your Kelowna beer. So other than that, enjoy the episode, guys. All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Beer Fish Fanatics. This is Grandy with Mapa Fishing. We have Kit with the Fishing Kit YouTube channel. And today we're uh, on site with the man of the hour. Help me get on some some nice fish, uh, Mister Denny with Float Fish Adventures. How you doing today, sir? Hey guys. Uh, thank I want to say that, that I, I did. Uh, Kit was very helpful for you too. Agreed. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not taking all the. I'm not taking all the credit. Well, all I did was say, "Hey, don't do that." Yeah, That's yeah. True. I was just like, "Why are you doing that? You, know you, know, you should do this. And do something different." <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll talk to everybody about that because I'm pretty sure you guys have had a situation where you're not as good as me fishing, and then you have gentlemen like this that obviously know what the hell they're doing. Um, but I, I, I figured out a few things this morning. I, I changed some things up. Well, we'll, we'll get into that. But um, no, I, I caught my PB of something today, so that was kind of cool. Standing on the shoulders of dwarfs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, quick shout out to our sponsor, Kelowna Brewing Company. Uh, I am doing the, well, Fishing Kit and myself are doing the uh, coffee with, how do you pronounce that name again? Coffee Cream Ale. It is no, no, <laughs> no, Kierkegaard, no, Kier- Kier- Kierkegaard. Yeah, Kierkegaard. Yeah. I, think, I think previous episode I messed that up. Uh, the Philosopher series. So we're drinking that. Uh, cheers, guys. Cheers. I'm gonna go grab that koozie over there real quick. Oh, I'm gonna go grab that koozie. Go ahead. I'm not used to doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking but, into the microphone. Yeah. Uh, just so everybody knows, we're we're. Um, we're in a location south of where we normally fish, which is south of Iowa. And we're in a body of lake where the fish are enormous, at least for the blue cats here. Uh, they have some amazing blue cats that are just out of the you know realm of size-wise, which is really cool. And that's pretty much why we came down here. Met up with Denny. We actually got sake fishing back there. Sean also, he's here too. Uh, I think you caught a couple of blues, right, Sean? There you go. And I came down here because, you know, obviously it's my number one is my birthday weekend and in the box. It is. Yeah, it is. Happy birthday, man. Oh, thanks, man. I didn't know that. Yeah. Happy fiftieth. Uh, really dude? I'm out of the loop. I'm not I'm not fifty. Forty one. But anyways. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and you know, I was allowed to. I got the pink slip to come down. It, <laughs> you it was were allowed it, to leave. I was allowed to leave. It was a struggle. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, I had to work. I'm a for 40 that. year old man. For a 40 year old, allowed to leave home. I was allowed to leave home, <laughs> and I had to work for it. I'm not gonna lie. So, uh, but uh, it was a, a chance of a lifetime because I see fishing kit and you, Danny, catch these um, enormous fish that we don't get to catch in Iowa. And I came down here. Yesterday, super excited, hoping to catch it. Uh, I got skunked yesterday, so but with the tips of fishing kit and Denny, I was able to get on my PB this morning, and uh, I'll, I'll get that to that in a little bit. But other than that, how, how's this trip been for for you guys? We'll, we'll start with Denny. How, how's this trip been? Has it been what you expected? I mean, when you come down here, what do you what do you expect? I guess. Um, well, so first off. First off, when I come down, I'm I, I come down by myself a lot. I mean, I, I fish by myself a lot, and so what I expect is to sleep in the back of my truck and fish all day. So to begin with, like having a base camp when you guys are like, oh, we're cooking food again, 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 again. So I've eaten I've eaten more camp food, and it was delicious. And I, I want to thank you guys for for like you know all the hospitality and and, and the good food. That's been amazing. Um, this has been. This is full on glamping for me, right? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't ever, ever camp like this. So this has been, this has been cool. It's been cool to, you know, be with, be here with just a crew of people mm-hmm. and watching, watching other people, you know, seeing you get, get on fish finally. <sighs> yeah, that was cool, right? I like that. I mean, I, you know, I come down and obviously whenever, whenever I go fish, I mean, you know, this is sort of a, 
I'm usually trying to go someplace where there is the potential to catch some form of trophy and you don't ever expect that but you know you figure if you can get on a few solid fish then it's a good it's a good trip you know so yeah so this has been this has been pretty cool pretty cool yeah thanks for did joining i answer us. your question i think it's so. because i talked for a lot that's I talked right. a lot there. it's okay how about you kit how's uh how's the trip been for you everything you expected what goals do you have right now or did you reach or go ahead i'll uh, hit my pb, PB. so that's a plus um well, like back home, we're we're not used to this type of fishing because we're fishing in 50, like anywhere between like 30 and 50 feet of water, and most lakes in Iowa, it's 30 tops, and we're fishing the what first 15 feet of it or so. Mm -hmm. But here we're fishing deep, and um, suspending so baits. That's a man. I love dragging baits and stuff for blue cats, but. Seeing that takedown in the kayak, oh man, when your rod just like doof, 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 in the water, man, I don't know, man, it's a toss up. It's just it went right the bite on sus suspended baits when you when you're suspending them straight down. That nope. that takedown is cool. It's totally cool. And don't be afraid to change your setup. And then others, make sure you guys listen to people who actually know what they're doing. It it, it helped because I was I had a setup where you know I had a flow on my you know the end of my leader and everything to kind of for drifting purposes right but yeah, when you were set up for dragon exactly and, and the thing was we're not drifting because we're, we're actually anchored down our, at our location and it makes no sense in a way to have um the way denny and and, and kit was telling me there it, it made no sense to have that float if, if we're suspended fishing if we're anchored down just get rid of that flow and literally go from the you know the swivel or whatever the leader straight to the hook to the to to your bait. Yeah, and Car Carolina rig, pretty much. Th there you right. go. I, and it made a difference because I think I had I had no bites yesterday. Today I had multiple bites, and then obviously I caught my PB um, blue cat. So when you're suspended like that, if you've got a Carolina rig, what happens is you just you're just inviting big tangles because mm -hmm. you go your line go your main line goes straight down to the sinker, and then. Your leader is then going to float up to the float, and then between the float and the hook is going to float is going to sink back down. And when you're suspended, you're going to be swaying, you know. So what mm -hmm. you're doing is you're just churning. That you've got three lines next to each other. They're just going to churn and tangle. I know we said Carolina rig in the original recording. What I meant was the Santee Cooper rig is what you don't want to use when you're suspending baits. So yesterday I had to retie three times. Today I retied zero. So you know Denny's spot on on that so thanks gentlemen for giving me that tip on that um weather wise it is freaking 100 degrees right now so i love it it's so it's, awesome it's uh we're in the shade i love the heat Denny, Breeze. denny's a masochist <laughs> he likes uh swass yeah, I don't know. swamp ass <laughs> swamp <laughs> So that's the last master, swass. <laughs> swass master yeah, it's, series. It's, it's definitely uh, the heat is on. Um, and also what if you guys were wondering, I think our previous episode fishing kit was saying, you know, fresh is the best. We're, we're fishing in the morning, in the evening for bait fish and, you know, whatever we catching, whether it's white bass, drum, crappies. And that's what worked for me. I switch up my bait, by the way. I use crappie fresh, fresh, like Kate was saying. So I tried it. I switched it out and it worked. Uh, what else are we using for bait? Whatever we can catch, pretty much, right? Smally. It's Small. kind of sacrilege, but yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. We might have to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't use a smally. Hey, it's know. legal. There you go. It's legal. There's always, you know, when people bring up, uh, when it comes to fishing, legal is the uh, the excuse, at least for some uh, not-so-popular practices. <laughs> but, hey, if, if all I could catch was smallies, they'd be bait for me, too. There you go. And uh, I forgot to take a picture of my freaking cap. I was so excited. You didn't get a picture? I didn't get a picture. I was so excited. Do you have any camera going? I, I It was too far away. I was just so excited. I was so... That was the thing. I, I You know what they say. I, I it's in the age of the internet. You know what they say. Picture it didn't happen. Right. I, right? It's okay. <laughs> no but one's gonna two, believe you. I had two. I had two witnesses at least, though. So that that was. Who that are was these a, witnesses, oh, Danny? Oh boy, really? Here we go. Here we go. Um, I don't know these guys. <laughs> <laughs> but and this is the thing, you know. Um, I was like a kid in a candy store when I caught that fish today. I mean, this is the thing. It, it's probably not the biggest fish I've ever seen or ever caught. Honestly, I think. Well, actually, not. It might have been. It might have been the biggest fish I've ever caught. 30 plus pounds. I mean, I don't think I've ever caught a bigger fish than that. 
to others it might be like you know whatever but you saw the joy you, you heard me i think the whole freaking lake pretty much heard me when i was you know landed that fish and then that was the one thing it, to make things even more difficult the anchor system so i got caught up when i was reeling in the uh, uh the fish it got caught up in my anchor and i, I think um, what denny another advice he's telling me for next time is to make sure you have an easy anchor release yeah so in case because it's dangerous number one especially with these size of fish it, 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 it can be it can be so it can be. uh and then plus you don't want to lose a fish so i mean um easy way to to just release the anchor make sure you have a float on the anchor so yep. you don't lose the anchor yep. uh kit yeah so um i normally run a that float on my anchor line and a couple of years ago i was anchored up and i got snagged so okay i'm gonna go pop off my anchor so i popped off my anchor like two seconds later <gasps> oh shit <laughs> <laughs> so so in other words he had to go buy a new anchor lesson new it's anchor. a lesson lesson new, learned a whole new setup it's a lesson. anchor rope float yep but. I don't. I don't think you really sold that story, right? You didn't sell your your fish because it was there was a lot of drama. It was right. Oh, yeah. It started off with all yesterday not catching fish, and this morning was slow. And you know, I, I appreciated your like fake optimism, yeah. but there was also a lot of, well, I'm going to be the one who doesn't catch fish. I'm going to be the one who gets skunked. That's just how it goes. And then, very first bite. The very first bite. Right, and that rod went down, and that was a good fight. It was it a good was. fight. It was a good fight. It was fun to watch. And then you're like, oh, shit, it's in my anchor line. And I'm like, oh, man, he's going to lose he's this gonna fish. He's going to lose it. I saw your face. Like, he's going to lose this fish. No, don't lose this fish. <laughs> but it, you know so what? it was high drama, it man. Was it was good. It was cliffhanging. It was a nail biter. It was. It was. You're right. Yeah, and I'm over good. there yelling like, "Hey, hey, reel down to the fish," right. or like release some lines so put so you put your rod out of the way and stop doing what you're doing <laughs> to try and lose that fish. So in other words, stay calm. Stay calm. It's hard. I, it's hard. Oh, it, yeah. When you get excited, so hard. man, it's yeah. hard. And and I knew it was a big fish, so I was like, mm -hmm. "Shoot!" I was like, "I just got to get this up as soon as I can." I you know the I was just. I, did, I just didn't want anything to go wrong, which yep. went wrong. And that, that was the thing. Like, it, I wanted to get up, to get away from my other line, to get away from the anchor line. And, yep. of course, it ran into it no matter what. So, one of those yeah. things. See, that's the that's the benefit of any time you can fish with somebody who's, like, like, if I go someplace else and I'm fishing in some way that I've never fished with someone who knows what they're doing, I'm, like, the white belt. I, I don't bring anything. <laughs> I don't know anything. Teach me everything you're doing, right? Because people usually learn those lessons the hard way right and i don't want to learn my lessons the hard way i want to learn my lessons i want to learn your lessons and let you learn them the hard way and then i'll just you know yeah <laughs> thanks city but no that um no you're you're right on because uh i think everything that you guys have kind of you know just little tips here and there it's not huge but it's enough to make a difference in little my, stuff yeah. little stuff and it's i really little think stuff that adds up and totally makes a difference makes a big difference and then um shout out to spencer we we uh He's not here. He's too cool to he's, hang out with yeah. us. We're, we're the big time. We're the peasants, right? He's big yeah, time. He, he doesn't want to be seen with peasants. We. I tried to talk to his um, scheduling manager, and I couldn't get a phone call with that person. So um, I think what I have to do is um, I have to try and send some smoke signals there we to go. a scout, and hopefully the scout will talk to his manager, and then maybe I can, because uh, you know. I know. He's big time. I know. Yeah. He's know. doing his thing. He is. So. He is. But no, uh, we, we we miss you, Spencer. We, we're hoping. I was hoping you get a chance because I, I don't know. I would go that far, dude. All right, <laughs> man. That, he he. Um, easy, easy. He talks a lot of smack, but yeah. when when you can clap back, it feels pretty good. You're right. I agree. But um, I'm not very good at clapping back. I just kind of like. Uh, Did you just say it. clap back, man? Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> is that what the kids are saying now? Yes. Yeah, okay. I think so. I'm the youngest one here, after all. Wow. <laughs> Man, he had to call me 50. Not even close. Man. You know, oh, yeah. One thing I kept telling myself, because I've lost a big fish from grabbing the leader line. So I was trying trying so hard. I mean, you, Denny, got like 80 pound over here, so maybe it doesn't matter. What do you think, Denny? Do you, how do you bring in I your don't, fish? I don't, I don't grab the leader line. At all? I don't grab the leader line. I um, And I don't like nets or... So I don't, uh, I call them fish releasers, 
right? Mm -hmm. But um, I know a lot of people like the nets. I'm not a fan of the nets because I've I've lost fish trying to screw around with the net and get it in position. I like my grips, mm -hmm. you know, and the whisker seeker grips, they, they spin. And so it's just a matter of, you know, I, I like to get the fish up close enough and and then they don't grab the line. I use the buffer of the rod, and um, I just get them close enough. I can stick them in the mouth with the grips, and then I let them roll, and then I pin them up against the kayak. Nice. You know, and then depending. The only, the only thing that sometimes will give me trouble is sometimes when they roll, because the grips are metal, mm -hmm. sometimes when they do that death roll, if they get like two or three, four spins around, they'll wrap the leader into the metal on the, the grips. Okay. So then you gotta make sure that you're really careful because sometimes the leader can get compromised, yeah. right? And yeah, I, I saw that happen to you with that fish because it spun around and yep. your leader wrapped yep. around it. Yep. And then my and then I couldn't un I couldn't untwist the uh, get the leader the leader was kinked up in the the grips and so that that leader at that point you know it was important that I just got that fish in because and, it sucks to lose a fish when you've got them on the grips and you think you have a hook in their mouth and then suddenly there's no <laughs> fish and you're like what just happened? Yeah. And shout out to Whisker Seeker uh, sponsor because um, that it was so much fun catching uh, the 30 pounder on uh, the the rod and everything uh, and I'm just I'm oh, telling you I don't know if I would if I would have used another rod or anything else if I didn't and shout out to Kit for telling me to up my line I think I would have lost it too I wouldn't be able to do what I did today if I would have used like a 20 or 30 pound line oh, yeah. yeah you want to be geared for the job yeah, that for uh, sure. a a 30 pound blue cat, the teeth on a 30 pound blue cat will, a 40 pound test line, they can just demolish it on your leader, right? Yeah. yeah. So, and, and that's why I'm like, because he told me, he goes, dude, don't even think about coming down here if you don't have minimum 50. Yeah. 50 pound line. Yep. I was like, all right. So I went, you know, I obviously went out and got all the gear and get, got everything, and, and it, I'm grateful. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I really believe I landed that fish because I had the right gear. Thank you for joining us at uh, Beer Fish Fanatics. And this episode is actually brought to you by Whisker Seeker Tackle. So make sure you guys go to whiskerseeker.com for all your catfishing gear. Enjoy the episode, guys. That's so. why I run 80 pound leader, which is a huge, huge pain in the ass when you get hung up. Huge pain in the ass when you get hung up. But I've had, um, I used to run 50 for blue cats, and I had, I had a blue cat. I had this huge takedown, and and the fish came off and, and and you could see I mean it was it ran it was up against his teeth Jeez. right and I was like Whoa. was it kind of like jagged yep. or a little yep. rough too yep. yeah yep. Yep. You, I mean he just that he got the leader in his mouth and it ran across his teeth when he had his mouth shut mm. and he just you know and I'm like and that was it 80 pound <laughs> I'm going heavy. I don't care if I can tie a good knot with it or not. You know? and, and thanks to Kit for losing his monster fish because in my back of my mind, don't grab the leader. When I was reeling that fish in, yeah. don't grab the leader. Don't because, grab the leader. Yeah, and, and I made sure I just put the, the grips on, uh, on the fish before I even touched anything. Just I wore it down pretty much. Wear them down. And the thing you all want to remember, especially with blue cats, it seems like uh, man, they even after they you're like, oh, they're, they're, they've been subdued. Or, you know, but once you grab them, they're going to try and do that death roll. Yeah. They're going to try and break your, you know, that's, if you're grabbing it with your hand, they're going to try and break your wrist. That's why I like the grips. And that's why I was, I heard in the background, prepare for the death roll. Right. I heard him. I heard <laughs> Denny. Denny like, Granny, prepare for the death roll. Be ready for it. Be ready for it. I was like, all right. And, and surprisingly, it, it, it didn't. It, it rolled like maybe once yeah, or twice, but it, yeah. it didn't go like yours. I saw yours. Because yeah. then he landed a, probably 30, 35 or two, and I saw it death roll at least four times on you. Yeah, you spun around a bit. Yeah. Yeah, so. that, was, that was pretty wild when uh, Danny hooked up because I had nothing going on. So I was like, you know what? I never tried drifting like along a deep ledge. And as soon as I lined up with Danny, boom, 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 boom. He hooks up with the uh, with that big fish, so that was cool. I got a I got my own angle of uh, of the action. He's got his angles, so yeah. Make sure you guys go check out their channels because I'm pretty sure I don't. Well, we'll probably release this episode way before your guys' videos because um, obviously we're still on site, and I'll probably, we'll probably release this uh, episode next week or in two weeks. But make sure you guys check out Flow Fish Adventures. You, you can see uh, Danny here. Uh, hopefully, he'll he'll show the video of the. Uh, 
monster fish he caught today. And same thing with fishing kit. Check out his channel. Um, you, you'll see his PB. It was pretty cool. It was this morning, right? It was this morning. Yep, my first fish. Actually, I think everybody's first fish this morning was a good one. Yeah, yep. it was monsters. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely quality over quantity this morning. Yeah. That we, was cool. We were talking about that. We're like, I mean, would we rather catch, let's say, 20 or 30 you know 10 pounders or would we rather catch we probably caught maybe what six 30 pounders i think today wait one two three four no four four <laughs> sorry i'm over a little, a little exaggeration there so sounded good <laughs> but that's no, a good morning for a group though i, I think right? so that's a solid morning for yeah, a group I I think yeah so. 30 pound blue cat that's a good that's a good size blue cat that's, anywhere that's a good fish yeah it it Made my trip worth it. Like, that's the only uh, blue cat I caught this trip. And if I had to do it again, I would. You know what I mean? Like, it, it made the trip worth it for me that to experience that. The chaos is what I call it, right? The chaos on the kayak. The chaos. Yeah, it's, like, so, like, chaotic and somewhat stressful when you're battling that big fish. And you're so worried that, oh, 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 oh God, I hope he doesn't pop right. off. I hope he doesn't pop off. And you're, and you're trying yourself. to, like, put yep. the grips in his mouth. And he's, like, not cooperating. <laughs> oh, man. But then once you get him in. It, it just feels so good yeah it no you're right it's like because you're by yourself technically you're on the kayak yeah, by yourself yeah. there's nobody can really it's help a one-man show it's yeah. a one man exactly yeah, yeah. and you're like man you don't want to f this up you don't want to f this. it's like and then i f it all up it, it didn't even matter <laughs> it's like okay just i just gotta be patient and that was the thing like you guys are saying you just i think patience and calm when you're reeling it in just figure out what you need to do to get it in and i think that was the keep breathing there you go. Keep breathing. Yeah, I, I was giving him a hard time. Like, you gonna land it or what? <laughs> yeah, he did. But you should take your time because yeah. the worst thing you want to do is try to hurry something and then you lose that fish. Yeah, then you'll just, be salty. That's yeah. painful. Right? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That that would have ruined my. I, 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 you guys, I might have been up here just drinking the right. whole time. I would have just like, I, I'm done for this trip. When you're like, oh shit, he's in the anchor line. I was like, oh. <laughs> He's not going to get a chance at that fish again, and but, this is going to be bad. But what I did was I stayed calm, and I released the anchor and just let more line out and just fix, just took my time. So that was And it looked thing. like it was hung up pretty close yes. to the surface. Because I saw the that bottom. Helped. Yes. That helped a lot. I think that helped tremendously because right. so it, it got caught right up, yeah, like, like Danny was saying, it was right at the surface. I saw the body, and then I, I could see in the water, like, oh, shoot, it's around the anchor. So then, yeah, you're, it, was, it was close. I technically probably could have grabbed it, but then... I was still back of my head. Don't touch don't it. Grab don't, don't, don't grab the leader. Don't grab the leader. It's like, okay, let's just, you know, figure it out. And yep. that's what I did. Just took my time, just released the anchor a little bit and give it some slack. And then it, it, it tired out. I Grace think. under pressure, man. You played it well. <laughs> See? Yeah, like for me, my fish, I, I didn't get to fight him for very long because he got wrapped up. So he came up easy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but once he got unwrapped, I was like, all right, he's, he's getting ready to fight. Mm -hmm. Then that's when I fought him after I brought him up to the surface. So, uh, it, to the listeners and, and the watchers, make sure you guys uh, try this out. Try try suspended catfish fishing if, on a kayak. If you're if you're kayak fishing, it's 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 new to me. I've never done it, and it's freaking exhilarating. Like these... when when the rod tip just yeah. goes down in the water and yeah. st the drag starts sp spitting out. That's it's yeah. so fun. The rod this kayak tips. It feels a little bit sketchy. Yeah, that's so fun. And that's how i knew i caught a fish well i mean i, I had a fish on because i was like i didn't catch anything for two days and i'm like why am i spinning right. i'm like why why because there was no wind this morning I'm like why am i turning and then i turned behind me and then i see my rod like like danny was saying was technically in the water like oh shit and i started re and then at first i was like man it's a snag that was my first <laughs> thought but they're like oh it's moving <laughs> so then that's when I, I figured out okay i got something and then i reeled because we had the circle hooks shout out to the circle hooks because it set it perfectly right on right in the corner yeah I, there, I don't see how you could set a hook on on the fish like in this deep of water trying to set the hook on him yeah Dude, it, that'd that be so be, hard that would yeah. be a mess because i mean i don't know i mean i'm pretty sure people do it maybe from a boat because you stand up and you have leverage and stuff but I, I don't see i mean i wouldn't do it just use circle hooks it's easy right agreed <laughs> yeah I think, uh, yeah, it was, it was point, you don't, it sets the hook for you, right? And technically. For the most part. Yep. Yeah. For the most part. So. And what I like is, uh, when they, they thump it and your whole kayak shakes. You're right. Like, Throom, like, huh? So cool. And you look over and your rod's bent over. Uh, so cool. Yeah. Especially cause if you have like, if you have like two rods out or even three rods out, 
when you feel the thump, you know, but you don't know which rod. Yeah. So you're looking, like, Where, which one is it? Which one is it? And you start getting drug one way or tilting one way. That's cool. And that's why kayak fishing, I'm telling you, if you haven't tried it, so fun. you got you got to try it out once in a while. I think it's a so cool. I mean, even catching white bass, it was fun off a kayak here. Love Drum. it. First train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what else uh, you got for this trip? Any other? Because we're right now it's uh, Saturday, 100 degrees. We're probably going to have some lunch, and then we're going to head back out there afternoon, evening by uh, any advice or tips that you guys in your game plan, I guess. What do you guys game planning for this afternoon, evening? Um, for me, I'll probably head back out on that ledge, but I'm going to look for fish. Okay. And then hopefully try to try to anchor on top of them. But, like, anchoring is kind of difficult, especially in the kayak, because you, you can't just – pick a spot like okay i'm gonna anchor right here and drop it straight down because the wind or whatever you're you're gonna push off wherever you're gonna anchor so you gotta kind of plan ahead of time like you gotta go i don't know 25 yards up towards the wind and then have the wind push you back so but, you're gonna uh, drift most i might if, if it's not windy i think i might try drifting along the along the ledge okay and then if i need to stay in one spot because i was just using my paddles to stay stationary and then if i'm not marking fish i'm just gonna keep moving Makes sense. Mm. You know what helps with the, uh, especially when you're in deep water and you have to anchor so that you don't have to let out as much line, um, is a section of chain, right? So I've got like a three foot section of chain that I use, okay. right? So I go from my anchor line to this section of chain and then my anchor. And the anchor still has, I mean, the anchor is set up so that it will pop the zip tie and, and quick release if I get, it gets hung up. Mm -hmm. But the chain, Right, so your anchor needs to lay at the right angle, right? And if you're dropping it straight down, it doesn't lay at the right angle. And then when there's any wind at all, then it'll pop up and you won't hold in position. Yeah. So with the chain, the chain is will be heavy and it will help keep the 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 anchor yeah. laying down. It's a, it's a pain in the ass to bring a carry around a three foot put section of chain so it's something i carry i don't carry with me in the kayak all the time mm -hmm. but it's part of my i have an anchor bag that's got all my different little anchor setups and so it's always with me in my vehicle so if i'm someplace where i know i'm going to anchor in deep water i've got the chain it's, so i needed helps. that tip yesterday denny thanks yeah. um because i i had my you anchor down before yesterday because if yeah. i told you yesterday you need some chain you'd be like well i don't have any chain yeah, very true right so. <laughs> yeah i was like so yesterday i was using the anchor I was like why the F, am I not staying still? Yep. And I think exactly what Danny was saying. And then some spots I was like, okay, it stayed still. I was like, it, that's exactly yep. what happened. It was like the anchor was laying in the wrong direction. Especially when you're on ledges, a lot of time it's rock, mm. you know? So it's not digging in and it'll, it, you got to hook something, you know? Yeah. And Good tip. No, that's a great tip. Like, I'm, I'm going to probably have to do that, get a chain because that, it makes sense now. Right. But when I was out there, it's like, why? What the heck? I need to get a heavier anchor. <laughs> like, that's what I was thinking. I was like, something's wrong with this anchor. It sucks. It's not holding me. And then it did at the end of the day. And like you're saying, I think it's just because I had the right angle. Now. Mm -hmm. if, if it was like on the, like a flat or something, yep. it'd be a lot easier. But yeah, like yep. Denny was saying, we're on a ledge. So you even got to have a more extreme angle for your anchor, mm -hmm. anchor or just have it catch on a rock or something. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. That's no. also why it's, it's really helpful to have your anchor rigged up so that if it snags and hangs up you pop the zip tie so you you, you tie it to the crown mm -hmm. right which is the part under the the opening part right mm -hmm. and then you run a line up to the, the 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 top right the stem i can't remember what it's called there's there's a term for it but and then you zip tie to that so that if it hangs up in a rock or something, you can pop the zip tie and then it will turn upside down and lift it from the crown and fold it up. And then you don't lose an anchor because you're in, you know, 30 foot of water and a bunch of rocks. Yeah, because like, let's say this is the anchor and you're hooked onto something. If, you're pull, if you got it tied to the top, there's no way yep, that's You're not getting out. it back. Yep. Mm. That's why you tie off to the bottom and then yep. with that zip tie, you can basically, you're going to be pulling from this bottom side. So it'll be like popping out like that way you guys have to show me when we go down there because yep. I, I i think i can envision what you're saying but i, I you guys are gonna have to show me right so if you're right so your 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 anchors like this mm -hmm. right and you actually tie here 
and then you run the zip tie and tie it here so it's normally like you're tied here and then this opens up and catches stuff right so you're caught like this but if you hung up now and i can't get my anchor back because this grapple is hung up someplace you got a zip tie here where your line's connected to here and you can pop that zip tie and now your line is connected to here and you're going to lift from the bottom and then oh, just lift okay. it up that makes sense. So people who are listening to this on the podcast, go check out YouTube because <laughs> what? Because Den, Denny just showed us hey, the Den, visual. Denny's got a video actually. That's where I got got my idea oh. from. Well, they, well, you know what? We gotta put this up on the uh, on the podcast, and we'll we'll put it at the video. And actually, that's actually probably my the most popular video I have is that anchor video. Wow. Okay. It's it's because it's it's helpful. It really is helpful. Yeah. No, um, we'll, we'll we'll put the link for for that video. Um, I'll find it and we'll, we'll we'll pop it up here because that could save your life or save your anchor. It can. It, well, you know, well, and here's the thing: when your anchor's hung up, and you're even if you don't tie the zip tie to it the right way, you end up getting straight above it, and you're trying to pop the zip tie or get your anchor, and that's the most dangerous thing. Is so like. You've got anchor line, mm -hmm. and you're l reaching straight down, creating a bunch of a bunch of potential energy, right? And then if it does come loose, you, suddenly it's free, right? And you you know the chances of going in the water it just can be messy. So it, the the way that the way that in in the video the way that I the way that I tie mine is so that you can pop the zip tie even if you're lifting straight up. Okay, I'll have to do that then. Yeah, don't you have like a loop? I have a loop. Yeah, you have a loop to the zip tie and then yeah. you zip tie it yeah. onto the top yeah so i did it exactly that way nice it so works out. i've never lost an anchor since i've since i've done it that way cool mm. i've lost one since i started doing it that way oh, it's because okay. uh i didn't have a float because really? <laughs> <laughs> i just threw the anchor in the water <laughs> yeah pretty oh. much <laughs> you proved, but yeah you did good donation to the you know structure it's probably the, still there. I, I actually, I actually lost an anchor that way because you know, with, with, I, I was in position and looking at my my sonar, and I'm like, here, this is where I want to be. And I grabbed my anchor and I threw it over, and I hadn't connected it to my anchor line yet. And I just went, oh shit. <laughs> well, you look at the line go, fur, 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 and then it's just gone. No, I like so I have I didn't clip oh, my zip my no. line to the and so it's just the anchor, right? <laughs> it was just the anchor, and I thought I had snapped it. I could have a big, you know a big a big snap, and I just took the anchor. I basically just chucked the anchor in the water and went, well, shit. <laughs> that was oh, not boy. smart. Yeah. So what what do you use for uh, line management with that? Because if you don't have like a spool or something to tidy up all that line, you just have like freaking you know. 60 70 feet of line That's in your nice. kayak so what do you use to tidy that up uh, anything yeah so i have what i have is um you know how they have the like the big the with the handle for like uh electric oh yeah 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 for yeah. extension cords yep. mm. you know they're in like this long i have there's they make small ones so it's just like hand sized so it's probably six inches and i use that and so what i do is um it's, I mean, it's not pretty, but you know, I, I know, I figure out about how much line I'm going to need to let out. I usually will take that off and then, um, I have a way that I'll snap that to a float to wherever I'm, so I can release the whole thing. It works. It works, but you're right. I mean, having a bunch of, having 30 or 40 foot of anchor line just setting free in the, the, on your deck in their kayak is just an invitation for knots. And so it, it you have to be just, Usually if you're moving from place to place and then, oh, well, now I need 20 foot of line and now I need 40 foot of line and now I need back to 20, just take the time and wind up the slack, mm -hmm. You'll, you know, because if you don't, if you get lazy about it, you end up, there's usually a price to pay for it. Yeah. We were talking about yesterday, so make, I don't know if you, if, you, if you guys anchor fish a lot, if you're kayak fishermen, but if you do, get some gloves because I, I got a nice little rope burn. From anchoring your, I don't know. You didn't have that at all yesterday. From you like know, from pulling it up yeah. or from dropping it down. A little bit of both. Well, actually, most mostly just pulling it up because pulling it's it freaking up. like fifty feet deep. It's like every time, like man, I was like, I got rope burn right here. Well, well, for dropping it down, I got a, Jeez. I got a spool. It's a, it's a, it's like a scuba line. It, they use it for diving. I mean, it's super thin. The the only downside of it is, uh, cause I got probably a hundred at least 100 feet of line maybe 150 okay. 
so there's a lot of line but it's super thin diameter and like pulling it up kind of digs into your fingers mm -hmm. and into your hand yeah. but other than that you know when i'm pulling it up i just i don't know just hand over hand Yep. all right i'm out of shape <laughs> obviously and that's that's why that's why you don't want to it's better to use a section of chain than to try and move up to a five or ten pound anchor because you do not want to be lifting a 10 pound anchor over and over again that's 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 my 10 pound anchor oh i had a 10, 10 pound anchor pound. yeah that's what i've been lifting your shoulder two days guys that's <laughs> that's what i've been lifting two days in a row <laughs> that's why i'm just like, that's why i got here. rope burn i'm just like <laughs> yeah i have a 10 pound anchor i was just like golly this sucks man yeah, yesterday that's... and i was and I, keep in mind i no bites no fish i was yeah. like I, this is probably at least like the 15th time I lifted up this freaking anchor. I was just like, I was getting frustrated. Yeah. And I was tired. Yeah, that's work. That's work. Yeah. I mean, I it's heavier than it is, too, because you're pulling it up through the water. You yes. get resistance. Resist yeah. You know? It's all right. See? Shout out to my wife. See, I'm going to have some buff shoulders <laughs> right? now from kayak anchor fishing. Is it crowded in here? Oh, it's just those shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just get the claw anchor, dude. Yeah. Just, what? Three... Three, three pounds? Yep, three yeah. pound, yeah. Three that's, pound grab. That's what I saw you guys. I like Yep. I thought I told you to get one of those. Oh well, I had I had this from previous. Oh, you had it? Yeah, so I'm like saved a little bit of money, but then now I realize I'm like eh, <laughs> Save that, your shoulders. That's right? 10, 15, <laughs> yeah, that ten fifteen dollars was kinda worth it. I probably should have done that. Yeah. But now I realize, you know. It's all right. It's lessons. Less, right, it's all lessons. Yeah, lessons. You gotta learn either through yourself or through somebody yeah. else. Yeah. Uh and it you know, just to kind of give everybody also, I mean, tra travel to fish. And when I say travel to fish, I, I really recommend that because I'm, this is the first time I've been at this lake here. Um, it's beautiful. We, we're at a campsite, and uh, I'll show you guys pictures and everything, but it's it's really beautiful. Never been here. Um, go check out other places. I, I, I We love to fish in Iowa, obviously. I mean, we're, we live there. But I think, you know, traveling, it, it's just something unique to it. The uniqueness of number one, you get to travel, meet different people. We got to talk to different people, meet different people, um, different species, different sizes of fish. It's just, I really recommend if, if you get an opportunity, if you have a chance, you know, take the family. Take, you know, it, it must be, but travel and, and, and go to different states. See other lakes. I think um, learning-wise, I got to learn so much in like a day and a half with these two gentlemen here and just coming to this like i probably would have never learned you know what i mean so i really recommend to anybody just travel and just go to different lakes try something new that you've never done before yeah and i think it will help you in the long run of becoming a better fisherman yeah no absolutely i was absolutely. gonna say um unless you live somewhere cool that has a lot of cool fish <laughs> we're coming from iowa so uh, it's uh it's like you need to travel like yeah we're not gonna be catching 30, 40 pound blue cats in Iowa. Very true. But traveling's fun. I mean, I, yeah. right, it's part of the adventure. I love it. Right. I, I love, I like, um, I, I have two, I have two lines of thinking, right? And I try and divide them up with, you know, I like to have what I call my home waters. And what I mean by that is I like to have a, a few target fisheries that produce trophy fish and I like to go there frequently and this is actually one of them for me right even though it's a drive um, but so that I so that I learn it so that I get good at it so that I know it so that I can catch fish on it and because that that teaches you how to dial something in mm -hmm. right and it's also good to continually go to new bodies of water new bodies of water and try and figure them out quickly because that forces you to be adaptable and when you take those two different skill sets and bring them together that's that you elevate your game yeah and and not just um for the kayak fishermen i just fishing period if you shore fishermen go check another lake out different 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 bodies of water has different ways the fish react and you know and you learn so many different yep. things uh i would say this trip have you guys learned anything new because I know you guys have come down here a few times. Have you guys learned anything new that, like, shit, I'm, I'm not going to do that again, or, hey, I should try this next time, or whatever the case may be. Is there anything that you guys learned new on this trip so far? 
kid's got it all down, man. No. Okay, <laughs> is there anything left to learn? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there's always something new to learn. No, got it. And like, you know, or experiences to learn from. Um, I think my biggest takeaway here is it's like the the big the big decision I have to make out there is like, do I want to stay in this spot? Yep and wait for the fish to move through because we're we're fishing in like a pro a, i would say a high chance area mm -hmm. it's like a, a highway for the fish mm -hmm. you know fish are eventually gonna move through yep. but the question is when is it is it four hours from when you anchor up is it the next half hour you never know and then making that decision do i yeah do i move now or do i sit it out right and because in the tough the tough part with that, right, is that, okay, yes, I know we're on this ledge and we know that fish are going to move in up on this ledge, but are they active enough that there are going to be schools moving in and moving through along the ledge and sort of grazing and looking, or is there a spot on the spot where they're all, you know, they're all sitting together, and if I find that spot, then I can get lit, you know, and yeah. you don't know, you don't know, and from one day to the other it it will change and you don't know you know and so there is always that i mean that's the game that's that's kind of what makes it fun is yeah that, you know okay what do i do do i sit here if i'm on a good spot i will like to i tend to move earlier right early in the day or when i first show up i, I like to kind of move around and then if i feel like there's an area where they've congregated mm -hmm. then if the bite dies down um I will, I will try and pick what I think is the best spot in that area. Like, okay, where, if they're gonna move in and out of this area, where are they gonna, where's the main intersection? You know, and then I'm then I'm usually willing to sit and wait it out. I mean, it's kind of my, my loose game plan, but. And I think the, the spot like you guys are saying, the spot we have right here is like, um, it's like a highway. That's a, highway. a that's a good, great, great definition of our, our location. It's like a, a, a ledge where it would go f approximately from like 25 feet and then literally go to what about 50 55 yeah, feet with 55 yeah maybe 60 in some spots yeah yeah no i think i th think i saw a 60 on my uh flasher but it's like like you were just saying because we were talking last night you're like this is the, sooner or later the fish is going to come through on this location but like you're saying how patient are we yep. i mean how long how much time do we have and i think this morning we were patient i think we we're all patient we we're like we kind of stuck it out and we all landed I like to I like to think of it like this, right? I mean, as a metaphor, and I'm kind of a metaphor guy, uh, but so to, it's a way to like sort of a, a visualize the whole thing, right? <clears throat> it's sort of like a mall, right? And imagine that like the food court in the mall is in the upper level, mm -hmm. right? So the main entrance to the mall is down on the, the base level, and then there's a second level, and that's where the food court is. So the fish the fish are in the deep water somewhere right they're in the lower level and at some point when they want to eat or they're they're going to move up to the food shelf mm. right where the bait fish are so what you're looking for is where's the escalator because i want to find the escalator and i want to set up at either the bottom or the top of the escalator and there might not be anybody there but i know that all all the people down here are going to end up moving through this gateway on this escalator to get up where the food is Right. Mm. And if you, you know, if you just imagine like I'm looking for the I'm looking for the migration route, the shortest route from the deep water to the food shelf and just wait. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that's how you catch fish. <laughs> that's pretty bad. No, that is that's awesome. Like, no, that's a great analogy. Yep. Yeah. But like any any place on the ledge isn't the escalator though that's one thing to keep in <laughs> that's mind right right it's yeah. not it's not the whole ledge isn't yeah. there is there's going to be little areas where this is the game trail this is the game trail yeah. and trying to figure out where those are it's usually something where there's there's a, there's some there's more rocks or there's some sort of intersection or there's something that the fish can recognize to bounce from point to point to point mm. it's pretty cool it, it's it's and uh the spot that we're at is like it's really close to shore too. Yeah, it's convenient. It's very convenient, and our location here it's it, it's really badass. Like we we can pull up our kayak right up in here, go down, and we're fishing instantly. Um, and then we don't have the paddle far. It's technically what about 20, 25 feet maybe out at best. Yeah. Just the initial paddle, and then the last paddle is yeah. 
I wouldn't say far, but you know, longer than what we would normally have to do to go fish and stuff. So it's cool just kind of do your little homework. We I had no idea, but we, we looked at Google Maps. It looked like, oh, it's a good spot. should be access to water. We we had no idea. Got here, and then, you know, these guys were able to find a, a um, hot spot. Um, cool. Well, actually, I looked at the lake map, oh, and I was like, I, I saw, I was like, oh, the main river channel runs yep. through here. Mm. So, I mean, fish won't always be here, but there's a good chance that fish are going to move through. So that's, that's kind of my game plan coming in mm -hmm. is like where can we go that will have the highest chance of us catching fish so do a little homework doesn't hurt yeah. always pace it to your homework there oh yeah yeah especially you, if you're going to travel yeah you can't just go to like like all right i'm going right. here that that would be me <laughs> I'm not, luckily i have these gentlemen uh that would have been me i've been like yeah it looks cool it's right next to the water yeah this is this is my first time at this part of the lake okay uh at this campsite and I bet this holds fish all year. I would, I would. You're probably always going to have some fish yeah. moving along that ledge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I would expect that. Cause like I came like early, early. I think um, maybe it was like April, mm. so it was still pretty chilly out, and okay. fish the spot we normally fish, and the fish weren't up there yet. But I didn't, I didn't even think about this spot. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, this is the first time I've been over on this area, so they, that's that's what I've learned. Right. I got another. Uh, options right it's mm -hmm. always nice to be like okay i know what this spot is like and i know how like like this like it's windy it's been fairly breezy here at the campsite but when we get out on the water where we are we're protected so i know if the wind's from the southwest and the wind forecast is fairly breezy this is still a good spot to come because it's not going to be so bad you would have never known until now but right? no I, right? I like and that those so, are the yeah. things that's what i'm always trying to do is think about like like my trips like okay I like to figure out, okay, this body of water holds good fish and that body of water holds good fish. But so what, based on the weather conditions, where's the best place to fish that, right? And so you're not fighting the weather because, you know, the, yeah. so that's, I'm always trying to dial in, oh, what's the forecast for this weekend? And based on that, what, um, you know, where's going to be the best place that I can go and be able to keep a bait in position to up my chances of catching fish. And so... I love the fact that now I've got one more place that I can I can throw into the list here. Oh, I like that. It's just like you said, just do your homework. You got yep. if you got to travel five, six, seven out, eight hours, whatever the case may be, do a little bit of homework. Yep. Helps you out, um, and you can land a fish of a lifetime, which I did, and hopefully, I'll I, I'll go out and catch another one this afternoon. Yeah, hopefully I we got get a fish of a lifetime this morning. Hopefully I can get another one today. <laughs> <laughs> two, two, two fish of a lifetime. Two In fish of a day. lifetime. Hey, man. But, hey, shout, shout out to Bo, though. Bo did uh, 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 catch his uh, nice PB. Yeah, nope. Bo caught a PB. I caught my PB. I Randy caught my caught PB. His PB. And uh, well, Danny just catches big fish, so, yeah, so it's it like, well, right. another day, whatever. <laughs> another day. Another That's, day in Danny's life. That was, no, that was still a good fish. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited to catch big fish any times. Cool. Um, I don't know. I think I – think, um, like I said, I really appreciate the tips and uh, the effort that you guys have given me, helped me out. I think uh, I'm going to use it this obviously point forward the rest of this trip. Uh, I, this is definitely not going to be my first and only trip. I think I'm going to come down here more often. I think I'm going to bring the family down here. So, you know, like I said, thanks to you guys. You guys are giving me a good taste, even though it was one. I mean, I, I caught other bait fish, obviously, but it was one massive fish that I was targeting, and I got it today. So. You totally did. Yep. Thanks Congrats, to you man. Thanks, man. Um, Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> thanks, Kit. Uh, you got anything else for Denny? Uh, we're, we're about to do a little bit of lunch, and then I'm going to try catch another PB if I can. Hopefully today. No, man. Thanks for thanks for uh, thanks for all the food and the hospitality, guys. I, yeah, I, I appreciate it for sure. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Like. Um, I mean, I'm glad you could squeeze this into your busy schedule. Yeah. Well, I do have a busy schedule, but I also, you know, I'm not, I'm not like Spencer. So. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not too busy. He can hang with the peasants once I in a while. I can hang with the peasants if See, I can find the time. Some, some, some don't. So it's okay. You're like you're gonna go catch potentially big fish. All right, I'm in. I'm See? in. <laughs> exactly. I'm in. But other than that, man, you got anything else for Denny? Kit? Uh, so Denny's kind of came out of retirement as far as fishing videos. So if our listeners wanna, you know, check that out, where can they go? Uh, Float Fish Adventure on YouTube, 
right? So I've been, um, I took a little hiatus, and, uh, but yeah, so dude, some videos are rolling back in. I got plenty of footage backlogged. It's mostly, the biggest challenge has been just the editing, finding time to edit, but I've been getting some done. So, yeah, Float Fish Adventure on YouTube, and uh, yeah, that would be great. Awesome. There you go. And you it, go, check out his channel. You'll see all those big fish that he always talks about. And it's the reason why he catches those big fish. So yeah, Danny catches big fish. He does. He certainly does. So other than that, like I said, thank you so much for getting me on that fish today. And let's let's go again. I'm ready. Ready? Awesome. I'm ready. All right. All thanks, right. guys. Yep. See ya. See ya. Thanks, guys.